Every so often a new product comes out that is so radically new that uh, it's obviously the start of a new generation of LED lamp. And this is one of them. It's a flame simulation lamp. And it's basically a panel of LEDs inside round a core that have an animation playing on them. It's a looped animation that creates the effect of flames and it is so convincing. If you put this in an appropriate fixture, like a coach lantern or something like that, you get this amazing Bram Stoker's Dracula effect of the, the lantern with the blazing flames inside. And it is so convincing. It really looks like real flames. And when I first came across these, the manufacturer, well, they weren't commercially available. I couldn't find anywhere selling them. So I contacted the manufacturer in China um, and asked that if they would consider sending me one to cover in a video. And they said, yeah, that's okay. And they sent me one. So in return for that, I'll be providing a link to the website in the description down below so you can find where to get these because they're definitely a very worthy lamp. So, um, yeah, as you can see, it looks pretty convincing. It's got two other modes. If I turn it off and on again, it goes into static on mode. It's like permanently lit. Uh, if I turn it off and on again, it ramps up and then it fades away again. It does this sort of ramping up and down thing, which is interesting enough. I get the feeling they just added that in because they could. But then when you turn it off and on again, it reverts back to the sort of flaming effect. So it's a three mode lamp, which is quite interesting. It makes it quite versatile. So let's uh, take a look inside it and see what makes it tick. So even under the bench illumination, it still looks very good. The power consumption is roughly about two and a half watts in flame mode. And when I turn it off and on again, said so Clive fumbling for the switch, and put it into static mode, it draws a peak of about yeah, 4.7 watts, I say roughly about 5 watts. And of course you get the dimming mode, which will just be ramping up and down between probably the best part of zero and... yeah, about the 5 watts. But the best mode is without a doubt the flickery flame mode. It's very good. So um, putting that to the side, if I uncover this, I'm not sure if this is all live or not, this unscrews this cover and inside is a matrix of LEDs and resistors on a panel. Um, and the panel, it's kind of wrapped round. It's got lots of uh, ribbon cable connections attached to the end on either side. And then the, it's a flat panel that's been folded round and then it's been screwed in. So I'm just going to unplug this since I don't know whether it's going to be mains voltage or low voltage. I'm guessing low voltage. The centre of the light is an aluminium core that extends from down the, at the base. It's where it's kind of resined in. Uh, or hot melt glued in, maybe. And it extends up to about here. Uh, so I'm guessing these two screws are into the aluminium, and this one is a small nut and bolt at the top, just hold that together. But there's also double-sided tape. Let's remove some screws and take a look inside. Fumbles for screwdriver, fine screwdriver. So let's undo this little nut and bolt first. I'm guessing the reason of the nut and bolt then is simply because the aluminium core doesn't go up that high. The bulk of the heat in use certainly in animation mode, will be at the base. But having said that, it's not that terribly high power. I have stuff on my finger, I'm not sure what that is. I shall wave it off. I have a horrible feeling it might be dunked cookie. Uh, so let's uh, undo this as well. I'm going to try not to break this because uh, it's kind of nice. I kind of want to keep it. But if I break it, I break it. It is, after all, here for our entertainment so I'm going to try and lift this up carefully. I'm a bit cautious about accidentally uh, damaging these, pulling these cables off the circuit here. So what I'm seeing here is that initially there's a plug. Are these keyed? One is slightly bigger than the other, so effectively they are keyed. So I'm going to pop that off. If it comes off, it seems to be quite tight. I don't think it's latched in any way. Is it latched? No, it's not latched. It's just very, very tight. Let me have to prise that off. At this point, the manufacturer may actually be regretting sending this to me. Hopefully they, they don't mind me opening this up. I'm not going to go into too much detail on it because it is a new product and they've obviously done a lot of research and development and it would be unfair of me to actually reveal too much about what's inside. I would say that the animation sequence is 
approximately four seconds long, and then it loops. Ooh. Oh, right, okay, this is dividing down into multiple bits of circuitry already. Uh, let's see if I can get this tape off the out. Do I even need to get the tape off the outside here? I don't think I really need to get that off. Uh, there's what looks like a small power supply down here, providing then the power up to the top here. I'm guessing the reason it's got three connections is it's providing maybe a 5 volt uh, for the, well, everything. And then maybe a reference for the turning on and off the power, maybe that's actually being detected in here. Uh, do I really want to take that out from the base? I do kind of want to take that out from the base, don't I? I do want to take the whole thing to bits, don't I? Yes, I do. One moment, please. Okay, well that's it thoroughly in bits now. And I've tested the voltages in this. In fact, I can unplug this now and put that out of the way. And the power supply just provides a slightly regulated, it's not super regulated, it provides a offload up to about 12 volts, but on load it goes down to about 9.5. So it's using a um, rm 32 s which is a fairly generic primary side monitoring voltage regulator. It's not got any sort of feedback. The three wires coming off this are the initially the rectified and smoothed uh, 9 to 12 volt supply, and that's actually used to power the LEDs directly, but on board on this one, it has a resistive uh, limiter and then a zener to clamp that down to provide a low current 5 volt supply for things like the microcontroller. The other wire coming from this board is the output from the transformer through a diode but not smooth, and that then goes to uh, this chip via a couple, uh, a resistive divider here, which is just providing it the information. It tells it basically when you turn it off, it probably sees that the uh, output isn't pulsing anymore, the actual output from this transformer, and therefore it knows that uh, the power's gone off before it loses uh, the power on the little reservoir capacitor on board, and that means it can back up and basically say it's been turned off and next time it turns on we'll go into the other modes, the, the next of the three modes. So there's an ST microcontroller, there's an anonymous chip, which initially I wondered if that was a memory chip, but it, I don't think it is, I don't think it takes that much memory for this pattern. Uh, this looks like a um, probably an I2C type driver, it's not got a number on it, but it does appear to be taking a couple of lines, probably clocking data from the microcontroller, and use them to drive what are two standard, and this is a bit surprising, there are two standard ULN2803s, which are octal Darlington drivers. And interestingly, they've put a, what looks like a pull-up resistor, or pull-down resistor, on the output of these. In reality, I'm pretty sure the ULN2803 has that already in on board. The unregulated supply goes straight out to one of the pins on the remote display. And the other, the 16 channels that it then provides of control, each go out to their own pin. I initially thought this was multiplex, but it's actually quite interesting. The panel round here, just tried peeling it off, and it was clear that if I tried too hard, it's very well stuck on with double-sided tape. And there was, because even the heat trick wasn't working because it's on an aluminium core, there was too much risk I was going to damage it. So I decided, since I kind of like this lamp, I'm going to try and keep this intact. However, what I have ascertained is that there are, are uh, very distinctive, three very distinctive sections around this lamp. And if I can actually get a Sharpie right now, if I can find a Sharpie right now, and I can draw a dividing line between them. So... One of the sections will be here, he said, drawing a very squiggly line, and one of them will be one, two, three, there. And those are echoed all the way around. So if I choose at random one of these input pins, and I supply about nine volts to it, just a random pin, a pair of LEDs in each of those three sections will light up. The, it's basically the same pattern, the same little zone here is replicated all the way around. I've just dropped one of the wires out and I've forgotten where that goes. That goes in there, I'm pretty sure. Yes, it does. Uh, so it's replicated all the way around and that doesn't matter because you only ever see one side of it at any given time. And the 16 channels are arranged as 
uh, pairs 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and then the top three LEDs, the peak of the flame, are actually, although they're using the same value of resistor, which is one resistor, uh, the resistor value is 360 ohms. Uh, although it's using the same value resistor, it's a slightly higher voltage drop uh, across the three LEDs, so they are a bit dimmer, but having said that, that is the tip of the flame, so to speak. I'm putting that in the wrong, I'm looking for this, actually. Yep, yeah, there it is. So that's the tip of the flame, the three LEDs. And the rest are just diagonal pairs. It's interesting, it's very neat. It's very sort of simple. Um, the As you chase down these pins, uh, they more or less sort of go in a stripe, except for the end of the first connector where it jumps up and does a couple at the end. So um, it's kind of simple-ish, but very functional. Um, it's a fairly typical design. I, I, ultimately, I can't really say a typical design because this is the first of this type of lamp I've come across. Uh, I think it's going to be the first of a range of these lamps. Um, and it's very impressive. I could almost see in the future the circuitry actually ending up on here. I I'm kind of glad that the ULN 2803s are being used because I th initially thought it was multiplex and that was going to make it flickery. But it doesn't look flickery. Um, it, does, it looks flickery in the sense of looking like a flame, but it doesn't uh, strobe flicker, which is good. Um, so in a sense, it's a lot simpler than I was expecting. But it is, that's good. That's a, That makes it very functional. So... Um, yeah, it's a very impressive lamp. It's certainly worth looking at. Uh, it's it's so innovative that uh, I'm pretty sure that it's going to start a trend. And you know, these sort of effects lamps are going to evolve from now, from this base, this first unit. Um, I would say that the pattern does repeat roughly every four seconds. It's sort of, and it's very good. You don't, unless you're actually looking for that pattern. Which, well, to be honest, I do look for patterns like that. Unless you're actually looking for it, then you're not going to uh, see that much. But uh, my temptation would be to write in the software, use a, what's called a linear feedback uh, shift register, which uses basically a stream of bits going along a, a couple of bytes, and then it backfeeds using an XOR logic gate uh, into the input of that stream, and it, it creates huge random sequences, massive random sequences, millions of bits long. And that would be nice using it to trigger patterns and actually so that this flame just never repeated visibly. It would always just be randomly doing sort of uh, random flamey things. But yeah, this is very impressive. So definitely check out the link down below in the description. It will take you to the manufacturer's website. And the lamps are impressive. They're, they're very impressive. And you'll see other demonstration videos of them there. Uh, and their factory with a whole row of them actually being tested. So yeah, this is definitely a worthy toy. It's very, very good indeed.